Welcome on in WIP Daily. Joe Giglio with you. Appreciate everyone subscribing, following the podcast, and of course our video podcast here on the 94 WIP YouTube page. Tucker Bagley, uh, Tucker Bagley, of course, with me going to jump on in a few minutes to give his thoughts on something that's been brewing for a while with the Phillies. And I think at first we all just naturally said, ah, it's not a big deal. Give it time. But we've given it time now. And it's becoming, I think, a big deal for this particular team. I'm, I'm not really worried long term, but for the short term, I, I think you have to. I mean, that, of course, is Bryce Harper's power outage. So Bryce Harper has three home runs. His last one was on May 25th. He has three home runs in 200 plate appearances since coming back from the injury list to start the season. Of course, we all know he's off of Tommy John surgery, which complicates all of this because every time I hear someone say, well, track record, track record, track record, well, there is no track record of, of Bryce Harper with a repaired UCL. This is all new, and I think it's going to take time for his power to come back, and we've seen this where we'll get into some of that with some of the guys in the past that have had Tommy Johnson, which is specifically, you know, left-handed swingers that are right-handed throwers. I think there's something unique about the the kind of situation Bryce Harper's in. You know, we, there were a lot of stuff that came out about fast has got to come back from this or that and Bryce Harper and plenty of guys come back from Tommy John. It's kind of unique. This is a batter with a right arm injury. That's the lead arm on his swing. That's the extension arm. And I think it's affecting things. What is power? So let's just go over some of the numbers and some theories that Tucker and I will throw out on what's going on here with Bryce Harper. So three home runs in 168 at-bats in 200 plate appearances. His slugging percentage right now is 399, which just is unbelievable. Bryce Harper, you know, over the last decade has been one of the best sluggers in baseball. I mean, his slugging percentages are routinely around over 500 and his best years, you know, 600 is the number that is out there. And even in his down years, it's in the you know, very high 400s or upper to mid 400s, 470, you know, whatever, for, uh, you know, 60, you know, up to 550. If, you know, it, this is what he is. And he's been that way for a long time. So to so see it at 399 it is is glaring right now. And it's, it's kind of bizarre because some people have compared what's going on with Bryce right now to what happened last year when he came back off the thumb and the surgery. But that was different. I just thought Bryce Harper in September of last year wasn't hitting. He wasn't squaring up the baseball. He was in a slump. His timing was off. And then, boom, it all arrived in that Cardinal series, hits the home run in game two, and he just it just went nuts from there all the way through you know, the NLCS and, and, and the Brave series, of course, too. The, the postseason, he was remarkable for the Phillies because he got his timing back. I never thought it was a lack of strength, a lack of uh, you know his ability to physically do it because he was healed in his thumb. And the 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 tear in his UCL, I think it's it's apples and oranges comparing what he was going through last year to what he's going through now. Last year, from what we understand, he didn't feel it when he swung. It didn't impact him when he when he swung the bat. That was just if he threw the ball, which obviously he couldn't after April last year, he would have had a sensation and and pain and all that kind of stuff. But hitting it wasn't affected at all. So the way I view Bryce Harper is last year, although he had a tear in his elbow. It didn't impact his, his hitting. It, it just it just didn't at all. The thumb injury did, the time off, the surgery, the rehab, and then all of a sudden he was back and his timing was off. His timing, although not perfect right now, it does and, and I think it's probably getting a little worse because he's starting to press here. That wasn't the issue when he first came back. He, he got on base five times in his second game back this year or at, at Dodger Stadium. And you look at some of the numbers when he does hit the ball this year. His egg, average exit velocity is 78th percentile. His max exit velocity, look at his stat cast page, is in the 90th percentile. You know, he's middle of the pack, hard hit percentage, but all his numbers, you know, his barrel percentage, he's hitting the ball on the sweet spot. It's there. He's walking. So he's seeing the baseball, you know, relatively well. And his expected numbers are all really good. The problem is he's not lifting the ball. He's hitting the ball hard on the ground more than ever. He has the highest ground ball rate he's had since he was 21 years old. He has his lowest fly ball percentage since he was since 2017. I mean, Bryce Harper, he just looks like a different hitter than we've ever seen before. And the only conclusion I could come to watching him day in, day out, there's two things I have. One, he's now starting to press. I don't think this was really in his head that first month. I was at a game against the Tigers. Uh, it's probably the first week of June, June 6th or whatever it was. And it was the night, the night before they canceled the game because of the smoke and the fog and, and all that stuff, the, the stuff coming down from Canada. I was at the game the night before that. 
and it, it was kind of hazy in the ballpark and the smoke was starting to come in. You, no one really knew what the heck was going on, but you felt it. Uh, so that was the night I was there and I was sitting uh, with my family in left field and he hit a ball to left center field that night. And I thought he hit it well. I mean, off the bat, my first thought was he's got it. And then it just, it just died. And he went back to the dugout that night and I sense I could see it. I mean, I, I didn't have, it wasn't watching on TV. I sort saw a replay, but I could just sense him walking off the field into the dugout. He was frustrated. And I have felt over the last three weeks, his frustration grow more and more. Some bad strikeouts kind of sprinkled in now because when he's hit the ball well and he thinks he's driving it, it's dying on him. And I think it's impacting him. You know, in the first month of the year, first month of his season, it was like, ah, he's not hitting much power, but he's still hitting. It'll come. The last month, I feel like he's all actually regressing a little bit because now I think it's in his head. So that that's that's the first thing. And, and this could become an issue. The second thing is the surgery, the, the the strength in his elbow, the rehab, the fact that he came back early, which everyone was just Gung ho about like oh, he's back early and and thinking while well, the doctors cleared him and all that, but there are checkpoints to rehab and, and it, it's made me wonder if another month or so of Bryce Harper rehab and like right now as we sit here in the last week of June, this was the time that Bryce Harper was supposed to come back. This this was kind of the anticipated date right around late June, early you know early July All Star break. This was when we thought we'd see him, but he came back early, and I wonder now if some of that extra time that he spent back on the field if he had spent it in in with rehab and just strengthening the muscles around his repaired ucl would it be different i don't know i mean none of us have the answer to this i'm just wondering now because we've watched him for the better part of a month and a half we've watched him for 200 plate appearances and although there's some impact i mean anytime you have any player getting on base 39 percent of the time the way bryce is he's not hurting the team with that because Whoever was in his place wasn't getting on base that much. So there's some obviously positive benefit to having Bryce Harper. And until recently, he was still hitting around 300. So he hasn't been bad. It's just not the Bryce Harper we expect, the Bryce Harper that we all know, the Bryce Harper he expects, and obviously the Bryce Harper the Phillies are counting on as a middle-of-the-order bat. Now, if he was hitting leadoff, maybe we're not as concerned about all this. But that's not who he is and what this team needs him to be. He's the cleanup hitter. Now, the other thing – and We'll bring on Tucker in a couple minutes to give his thoughts on this because I know he was kind of looking up some of these numbers last week with some of these other guys. Bryce Harper off of Tommy John. He's not the first hitter. He won't be the last. It's obviously more of a story when pitchers get this. Do they get their velocity back, their command back? It takes some time. But if you look at some other guys that have had this surgery, hitters, there often is a year lag on their power. It just doesn't come back right away. And the, the biggest example I can give, and the one I think was, will hit everyone the most, because now look at what he is, is Shohei Otani. Now, again, that was a little bit more complicated because he's a hitter and a pitcher. But he had the surgery, you know, 2019. And you look at that first year back, I think he had like 18 home runs, somewhere less than 20 home runs. First year back from Tommy John surgery. And now you look at the last few years as he's really progressed. So I think he had the surgery after 18 into 19, came back. Uh, full 19 season, I think he came back around May, you know, early June. And then the 20 season was all weird because of, of the pandemic and only 60 games. But you look at Bryce Harper, uh, excuse me, Shohei, uh, Shohei Otani, 21, 22, and now 23. He's been, other than Aaron Judge, the best power hitter in baseball. And, and he's obviously the best player in all of baseball altogether. So that power that is was always obviously there with Shohei Otani and is now back, it disappeared for the better part of, you know, a little over a full season, if you could buy when he came back in, in 19 through whatever that was in 20, the 60 game season, it really disappeared. You know, over the course of a full season, you know, didn't hit many home runs, not, and certainly not at the level of a home run hitter we know he is now. He's a guy that can hit 40 plus home runs. He's leading baseball now with 26. I mean, he might be a 50 home run guy again this year. He's a great player. And Bryce Harper and Otani's power, I think, is comparable. You know, Harper's power is unbelievable, and it wasn't there for Otani. Same thing happened to a guy like Matt Wieters, catcher for the Orioles back in the day. You know, D.D. Gregorius. I mean, left-handed hitters, right-handed throwers, lead extension arm. I think there's something to it. I think it's probably a subconscious thing where maybe they don't feel like they can really let it fly. And it just affects the way the ball comes off the bat, including launch angle. And, and Tucker, as we look at Bryce Harper right now, he's it's weird because he's not hitting poorly, right? It's not like he's hitting 205 and he's not – striking out every single time. It's just there's no lift. Even when he hits the ball hard, it's either on the ground or just kind of like a line drive. 
Yeah, and if you're Bryce Harper, I wonder if that's almost more frustrating, right? It'd be one thing if he wasn't hitting the ball hard, if his advanced metrics weren't around what his career average is, and he could point to, well, you know, the elbow isn't back, my strength isn't there, I need to fix something mechanically. But for him, I mean, you look at the numbers, his exit velocity is almost identical to his career average, his barrel percentage, his hard hit percentage, right? Like all of the underlying things that we look at for Bryce Harper, like they're there. It's what his normal uh, career numbers are. So the fact that it's simply he, him not lifting the ball, and maybe that's something with his swing, maybe that is something with the elbow and not being able to extend, whatever it may be. I wonder if that's more frustrating for him. Like you, you mentioned that game against the Tigers where he was you know slamming his stuff in the dugout, and it's it's happened a bunch because he's you know flown out to the warning track or, or deep into the outfield quite a bit um, during this drought. And for him, you know. I wonder if it's just a matter of he needs to see one get over. He needs to just finally hit one over the wall and, and maybe it'll come in bunches because he's a guy who when he gets hot and he's gone through home run droughts um, as a Philly before, nothing nothing to this extent where it's extended 33 days or, or whatever it's been. But he's gone through uh, you know weeks and, and a couple weeks stretches where he hasn't hit a home run. And luckily for Bryce, Philly's going to Wrigley Field tonight and – that's probably the best park he's hit in in his career. He's hit 350 and 100 career at bats at Wrigley Field. He's got an OPS of 10.35 um, in 100 at bats at Wrigley Field. I mean, this is a place where if you ask Bryce, I think he'll probably tell you it's his favorite park to play. I have a feeling that this week is when the the drought breaks. Is when we finally get to see NLCS MVP, 2021 National League MVP, Bryce Harper kind of break out of his shell because. He's comfortable in Wrigley Field. He, he's had the most success at that stadium more than than anywhere else in his career. I hope you're right. Uh, well, and it has been. I remember the one series uh, he was there when he, early in his career when he was with the Nats, and he was either coming off an MVP or was one of the MVP years with uh, with the Nationals. And Joe Madden, who was managing the Cubs then at that point, w- walked him like five times at a game. Like he just wouldn't face him there in Wrigley because because he, he killed it. Uh, maybe that is. Maybe maybe Wrigley's the spot, and he sees one go out. Tucker's going to be there at the games the next couple of days, and. Maybe uh, maybe this is the the antidote for what's going on with Bryce Harper. But I will say I, I have no worries, none, that as Bryce Harper's career plays out, he's going to hit for power again. This is who he is. It's who he's always been. Other guys that have had this, especially similar hitters, right-handed throwers, left-handed hitters with the lead extension arm with the surgery, it's disappeared for a time, the power. It comes back. So Bryce Harper will hit a lot of home runs again. He's going to have a lot of home runs in a Phillies uniform again. I am not sure, though. It's coming back this season. I, I don't know. And, and I don't think the Phillies, as they get forward, look forward to the trade deadline and, and kind of forecast the rest of their season, can prepare and just, you know, pencil in. You know, Bryce Harper has three home runs. If I set the over under on his home runs before the season, you know, if I told you he's coming back first week of May and I said to you, how many home runs? I think a, a fair number would have been 24 and a half, you know, around 25 home runs. Is he getting that number now? Like if I give you the same number now, 24 and a half, would you take the over or the under? I would take the under. It doesn't feel like we're heading for a big power year to Bryce Harper. Now he's going to hit some. You know, they'll run into some. There's probably going to be a few that are line drives that go out that he just it just clears the wall, and it's because he's still hitting the ball relatively or very hard that it just clears the wall and it's a home run. But those majestic bombs, I think of the one he hit, you know, in – St. Louis in game two of the of the wild card series last year. Those like the ones where he really because he can really put a charge in a ball and hit it with a big arc. Are those coming back this year? I don't know. I think it may take longer than he wants, than the Phillies want, than all of us want. And we just have to be patient on Bryce Harper because you know, he came back early and he's not the first. He won't be the last to go through this. I just hope as we p- go through it he doesn't continue to get frustrated and take away from what he is still doing well, which is hit the ball hard, which is take his walks, which is get on base, but he can still be an asset. And then when the power comes, you know, he becomes Superman again, which is what we've known him to be. And we saw in the playoffs last year, perhaps it's Wrigley, perhaps it's around the all-star break. Maybe it's August. Maybe it's next year. I don't know when that real power has come back for Bryce Harper, but it is, it's impossible not to notice a guy who's been one of the great power hitters in the sport for a decade doesn't hit home runs or hasn't hit home runs mostly over the course of the season since he's come back. It is something to keep an eye on for the Phillies, especially a guy who launches the way we're usually, uh, we see Bryce Harper launch. Appreciate everyone listening. Hopefully Bryce gets hot here as the Phillies head to Wrigley field for a series back tomorrow. Another WIP daily.
Thank you for listening, subscribing, of course, following our video podcast on the 94 WIP YouTube page. Thanks for listening.